When I was younger, I didn't want to do anything. I just thought there was something wrong with me. All my report cards said like, he could do anything he wanted to do if he just applied himself. It's odd because when I'm not connecting with people in drag, I don't want to connect with anybody. <laughs> but when I'm out there in drag, I actually do love stomping it out on stage and choosing a song that people love. And like, you know, I help people have the best time all the time. I used to think it was a character and then, you know, go through periods where you think it's just a dialed up version of yourself. She's a full figured woman. <laughs> She's, uh, she wears lots of padding. People always come up to her and ask her, uh, like, oh, I wish I had a body like that. And I say, well, you can. Just go down to the brick, get a pair of scissors, and cut up those couches. My name is Alma Bitches, and I am from Vancouver. For better or for worse, I seem to be a little bit more of an all or nothing kind of person. When I did drugs for like seven years of my, my youth, I didn't do anything besides that. It was like uh, someone had just given me the answer, the answer to everything that I needed. Up until that point, you could be in a room and just be conscious of the fact that you're nothing like anybody else and they're gonna kick you out or they're gonna start calling you names or they're gonna start beating you up or they're gonna do something. The one that I really kind of connected with uh, was crystal meth. The thoughts I was thinking, the, the, you know, the feelings I was having, like I was felt so, so good. Then all of a sudden I was doing it every single night of the week. The last time I lost touch with reality, I went to bed and I woke up and I was not fine. It was still there. So I had a little bit of a break, a psychotic break, as I was told by a counselor. You know, I tried, I tried my hardest to die and it didn't happen. I started uh, meeting people that were in recovery programs that were out of the closet. Make sure my nose is on straight. And that was basically something that was gonna be really important to my survival in this world was to come out. It seemed at the time to go out and meet other queer people that you had to go to bars and things like that. And you know, we'd go watch a drag show. So I started seeing drag queens and I thought it was really cool, but none of them looked like me. I'm more of a bear uh, in appearance. Um, so for those of you that don't know, like, you know, lots of gays, they, they turn people into animal stereotypes. So I'm what's known as a bear. So I'm a bigger gentleman that has a beard, maybe a hairy chest and stomach, that sort of thing. Other places too. There she is. She just needs to put on some jewels. And, um, <laughs> I went to Denny's one night and I just remember I was sitting there with, with my friends at the time and we were putting whatever we put on the jukebox and I was kind of going ham at the table, you know, like lip syncing and stuff like that. And one of the guys I was with was like, oh, if you just lost a ton of weight and shaved your body, you'd be such a great drag queen. And I just remember just being like, like, yeah. And I just kind of pushed it aside and just sort of was like, yeah, drag's not for me. But then it was going to other places outside of Vancouver and going to drag shows and seeing like bearded queens or seeing hairy queens or seeing like people of all sorts of shapes and sizes to drag. It was like, oh, it's a thing to see like a person that looks like me do drag. The rest is her story. I quickly learned that my passion was to throw shows. And now I have 
two weekly shows and a bunch of quarterly shows and a bunch of monthly shows. So what I do is I, I take sound clips from say YouTube and I splice them in with song, sound clips of songs. And I sort of like make little art pieces out of them. When it kicks in. Did I ever tell you the time that I found a dead body? And people are like, ah! and then you go back into the chorus. I was out riding my bike one afternoon. Over in the ditch, I spotted a, a mannequin. I thought it was a mannequin. I thought of all the ways I could dress it up and everything, you know? And then back into the song. <laughs> you take this dialogue and maybe you go to a different song, right? Dead bodies. Oh, uh, another funny one. Will your mouth still remember the taste of my love? Because it's a sing-along one that people actually all really know and they like it. Will your eyes still smile from your cheek? I just like it because it goes through the whole song and. It's a really beautiful song about being in love, but then the person is reading the other person for Phil. So honey now. It's like you're giving them the song they want, and you're also giving the song that they don't know that they want. thrills me the most about performing, I would have to say loud thunderous applause. <laughs> My ambitions for Alma Bitches is like, I've always wanted Alma to be like, I want people to know me. I would love to throw parties where like thousands of people are like, are hanging out and living for the show. I want to travel the world. I want to be booked and do shows outside of Vancouver. And I feel like, you know, if I keep doing what I'm doing, then, you know, people will be talking about Alma Bitches long after I'm gone. Hello.